Hi! Easy navigation helps users get around your website better and find the information they need quicker. There are more than 20 blocks in the tilde library for creating different kinds of menus. All of them are set up in a similar way, so let's dive into the details of setting up a menu using block ME301 as an example. I'll add the block that I just mentioned and start with the most important thing – menu items. I put the block at the top of the page and open the content panel of the block. In a nutshell, the menu items are links that your visitors use for two main purposes – to navigate from page to page of a multi-page website or move between sections while on the same page of a single-page website or a landing page. In the content panel of the blog, you can edit the list of menu items, add new ones and remove them. Also, you can drag items up and down to rearrange the order. Let's have a look at the items. As I've mentioned, they can link to another page of the same website or to another blog within the same page. About is the first item here. I can put a custom title in the first field or go with one that's here by default. In the second field, I can add a link for the item. I'll explain where you can get these links in a second. I can either type in the address manually or use the buttons below to speed up the process. I click link to page and see the list of pages in this project. I click on the page I want to use and its URL is added automatically. In my case, page 29403235, if you type in the address manually, you can put an absolute path, meaning the full URL address of the page. For example, I'll write Write https colon slash slash my site dot com slash page one two three four five dot html. But as a rule, it's not necessary to put the full URL for the pages within the same project. You can use a so-called relative path for that. To do so, just write slash page its number dot html. It basically means that this is just another page of the same website or domain. But if you want to link to an external website, for example, your partner's website, the path has to be absolute. That is to begin with https colon slash slash as I've explained earlier. Now let's look at how to set a page's URL. As you can see, currently the address is page 29403235.html, but I'm not quite happy with that. So I want to change this URL to about. To do that, I need to open the page settings. I want to point out that I need page settings for the page I want to link to, not the one where I'm setting up the menu right now. So I specify the required URL in this field, for instance, about. Then I click Save Changes and publish the page. Now it will be available at this URL and you can link to it from other pages, including menus. Now if I click Link to Page again and choose the About page, the About URL is automatically added. You can do the same with other pages. I'll also delete the second item and specify the link for the Services item. To do this, I click Link to Page and choose Services. The URL is added automatically. To demonstrate how you can create a link to any block on the page, I'll set up a link to the contacts button that you can see on the right side of our menu. Again, this is a link to another section within the page, not to another page of the website. I go to the Buttons tab and find the button title text of the same name, Contacts. As usual, I can put a custom title in the first field or go with one that's here by default. Then I click Link to Block, scroll the page down and click on the block I want to link to. The block ID has been added automatically. This is a so-called anchor link, that is, a scroll to the required block of the page. There is another way to set up the anchor link to the block. You can add T173 block or anchor link from the other category right before the required block. Then in the content panel, set the name for the link, for example, contacts. This anchor link block can be added to all required sections of the page. It will help you set user-friendly links for the menu items. To save the changes, click Save and Close. Also, if you want the page to scroll smoothly to the anchor link, add T178 block or a smooth scroll to a local anchor link from the same other category. Now let's go back to the Buttons tab of the Content panel and replace the link here for Contacts. Remember to keep the hashtag sign here. You can also set pop-ups for the menu items or buttons, but we won't be getting into that in this video. You can read about that in the Tilde Help Center. The link will be in the description. Editing the list of menu items, you'll see the new window checkbox. By default, the link opens in the current tab, but you can check this box and then the link will open in a new tab. You can add a new item by clicking the Add Menu Item button. 
You can also add so-called sub-items or second-level items. These items are displayed when you hover over the main menu. To edit sub-items, you need to click the plus sign on the left side of any item. Please remember that the optimal amount of menu items is 7, 9 tabs. I would highly recommend you get rid of some menu items if there are more than 9, as it can adversely affect your website user experience. If you need more items, just use another block, the hamburger menu for example. Moving on to the logo tab. The logo can be either text or a picture. The image file can be uploaded from your computer. I have an image that I'll upload and write the slash sign in the field. You can set either the full address of your website here, for example, https colon slash slash mysite.com or a short option, slash sign that is a quick way to add a link to your homepage. Now let's briefly discuss the homepage. This is the page that opens up by default and in fact you can assign any of your website's pages as a default one. To assign the homepage you need to go to site settings, click the homepage tab and choose the page you want to assign. In the content panel of the blog, I can also add share buttons. These are social media share buttons for Facebook or Twitter that allow sharing the page with friends and subscribers. Above this tab, you can also provide your social media links to Facebook, Twitter, Behance, Instagram, Pinterest, Vimeo, YouTube, LinkedIn, SoundCloud, Telegram, and so on. This is optional, you can add links if you like or skip this section. We have already discussed the Buttons tab and here is the Languages tab. In some menu blocks, it is possible to set up a multilingual website. If your website is supposed to be in two languages, you can define these languages here and add links to the pages in two different languages. Now let's look at the More tab. All menu blocks are automatically adapted for the mobile and the menu items are lined up in one column on a mobile screen. In the More tab, you can add text that will be displayed in the mobile version. You can also make the menu items fold into a so-called hamburger. I'll show you how to set it up in a bit. Click Save and Close and check out what our menu looks like now. You can see that the logo I've uploaded looks a bit big, but I'll fix it in the block settings later. That is it for the content panel. Now let's customize the look of the menu in the block settings. In the main settings tab, you can set the menu bar position and there are several options here. Static. The block with the menu behaves like any other block. In other words, it doesn't change or move on scroll and just takes up some of the page's height. Absolute. The menu is overlapping the next block, not fixed. The menu block looks like it doesn't have its own height, but it's superimposed on the following block. This option works best when you want to combine the menu with the cover. For example, you can remove the menu's background and create a nice look with the menu items located right on the cover background. Fixed on scroll. This option works if you want to additionally focus users' attention on a call to action, for example, the sign up or call us button, or optimize the usability of the website if it's content heavy. In this case, the menu is always visible to the users, so they'll be able to navigate through the website sections or pages quickly. The main thing here is to make sure that the height of the menu isn't too big or annoying. For now, I'll select the absolute option. The next option is the menu height, I'll set it to 100 pixels. You can also set when the menu should come up if it's not needed at once. This setting makes sense best when the menu is fixed. Let's say you've selected the fix on scroll option before and set 700 pixels here. Then the menu won't be visible on the hero section at first, but as the visitor scrolls 700 pixels down the page it will appear and will be fixed at the top of the screen. To make the menu visually blend in with other content, select the suitable option in the menu container width. The menu can be stretched to either 12 columns or 100% of the width of the browser window. In the menu background tab, you can set the color and opacity of the menu items background. And you can make the opacity change on scroll. You can also add a shadow and set the menu background color visible when you edit but transparent on the published page. If you have set the menu overlapping the next block, like in my example, here you can remove the background color at all. In the menu items tab, you can adjust the style of the items, text color, spacing between menu items, size, font, weight, etc. 
I'll align the items here to the right side of the screen as I like it more. You can also adjust the appearance of items on hover as well as that of the active items. An active item is one corresponding to the page you're on. The appearance of submenu items or second level menu items is set up similarly. You can also set the color, size, font and weight for the logo if you use text. If you use an image like in my example, you can set its width here, I'll set it to 180 pixels. And here you can set what the description should look like. The description is the text that appears next to the button in the menu. In the buttons tab you can set the appearance of both share buttons and link buttons. I'll set this fuchsia color for the background and white color for the text and I'll reduce the border radius to 5 pixels. Since I have just one button here, there is no need to set up anything in the second button settings. In the tab for hamburger and underlay you can set the look of the menu for mobile devices. For example, it can be displayed as hamburger, which is basically three horizontal lines that reveal all the menu items on click. It comes very handy when there is a need to optimize your website navigation for smaller screens, as the hamburger menu takes less space on the screen. You can set both hamburger and underlay color or flip hamburger horizontally, so you choose what you like. Click preview and check what it looks like on a published page. You can see that the menu looks well balanced as I didn't set the menu bar background color and the cover of the page becomes the background for the menu items. Our menu is all set up now, but currently it appears only on the home page. To set it for all pages I can add it to the website's header or footer. To do this I cut the menu block from the page I was editing, add a new blank page and paste it to the newly created page. As there is no paste button by default, I'll add any block and click paste here. Now I can delete the block I just added. Then I write menu and the page URL my menu in the page settings and click save changes. Let's go to the site settings and then to the header and footer tab. Here I assign the page I have created and click save changes. The important thing is that if you change anything in the header, for example, add new menu items, delete links, etc., you should republish all pages of the website. There is a quick way to do it in the project dashboard. Just click the button publish all pages. Now you have the same menu displayed for all the pages on the website. It is convenient as when you want to change anything in the items or links, you won't have to edit every single page of the website. The menu will automatically be added to the header of every new page you publish. The way I've set up the menu in this video is just one of many options for building navigation on your website. In the menu category, you can choose a suitable block for you and set it as I've described before. You can find a detailed guide on how to use menus in the Tilda Help Center. You can also check out our useful article how to create a website navigation menu, where we explain in detail how to create various kinds of menus. And that's it for now. Good luck!